to another video about our website project. Now uh, we are going to put some final touches on our website. So let's go ahead and uh, reopen Composer. If you are in the lab, you can simply go to the Start button and then type in Composer. And uh, it's going to show up in uh, your menu. If you are at home, you need to navigate um, to the folder where you unzipped Composer into. So we'll go to Documents, and then I will double-click on my Composer folder, and then double-click on Composer itself. And this, of course, will start uh, the program. From here, let me uh, remind you how we set up our project folder. Uh, we have a single folder where all our pictures and all our files are residing. If your pictures are in the pictures folder on your on your computer, make sure please to copy all of them into a single folder. This is go going to be very important when publishing. So we have uh, our files, we have uh, our pictures, and now we'll go ahead and reopen them in Composer. So we have our first page, second, and third. Okay, so the first change um, that uh, we'll process is we'll make sure that the menu is on the right side uh, in the upper side of the screen and, um, uh, and the menu is going to be more concise, uh, it'll be smaller. We'll do that by resizing first the table. So if you recall we changed the border of the table to zero so it's invisible and now we'll go ahead and resize this table. And notice that Composer keeps all the cells the same uh, width. So we can go ahead and make uh, the menu as uh, conveniently um, uh, spaced for the end user as possible. And now we will select the table and go to the Table menu and then Table Properties. So this is where we change the border to be invisible. But now we're going to change the table alignment from left to right. And when we do that, notice how the table moves to uh, the right side of the page. And so uh, many uh, sites would have a menu somewhere up on the right. So from here, uh, we could just go ahead and copy and paste this on, on uh, our other two pages, which we'll do in a moment. Next, let's uh, change uh, uh, this text. Uh, and what I will do uh, is I will first add a few more paragraphs because what I'd like to uh, show you is how to manage some of this uh, space uh, with uh, tables, but also how to create links which will help us with some of the scrolling that happens on longer pages. So imagine that a user is reading this text and they reach the bottom of the page. How can we help them to quickly get to the top of the page? Well, we can do this by selecting the top of the page and creating an anchor. And so here is our little anchor uh, button. And we'll create an anchor called top and say OK. And so this means that um, there is a placeholder. It's a, a spot that the page can be referenced uh, with. So now we'll go to the very bottom and uh, uh, here we will say go to the top of the page. All right. Now we'll change this statement to be a link and we'll go ahead and use the link button this time. And notice if I drop down uh, my anchor list. So we are no longer selecting the folder uh, as we did before to take the user to another page on our site. Instead we're going to drop down uh, the list of anchors and select top. So we'll go ahead and say OK to that. And what this created is simply a reference to the top of the page. Let me show you how it works. We'll go ahead and say save to this page and then we'll browse this page all right, momentarily, uh, browser opens up, and now we have our menu in the upper right. We can go ahead and scroll to the bottom, 
and say go to the top of the page and you can see that I was moved right the corner of the page was moved right to where the anchor is so this would be an example of an internal link uh, just like uh, our menu is the internal link because it keeps us within the same website all right so let's go back to our page and this time uh, let's say that uh, we are trying to um, manage space a little bit better so right now we have just floating uh, text with the picture and as you can see um, in our uh, browser uh, depending on the size of the screen uh, these paragraphs are going to uh, change and uh, the, the page is going to uh, have a different look which can be risky sometimes, especially on very large screens or on very small screens. So let's take a look at uh, our page here on Microsoft Word and let's try to manage the, the space differently with a table. So uh, in this instance we have uh, a picture and uh, start of a paragraph with a link. What we will do here is we will insert a table and this time, uh, this table is going to be uh, three rows um, by two cells. Let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. Now, in order to move our existing content, I can simply um, cut and paste, like so, or I can drag content into the specific areas. Notice that you can always resize the picture all right and uh, and adjust as needed so right now I can add text perhaps describe Microsoft Word for uh, my needs here I'll go ahead and again use just the, the, the filler text uh, you can further uh, adjust the the size of uh, um, of the cells as needed so tables can be fairly flexible. Uh, remember that you can always go to table properties in order to manage uh, details of uh, the cells and the tables. So uh, let's uh, put together a few more uh, paragraphs here. Okay. Uh, notice that uh, this kind of a layout uh, helps perhaps to uh, to provide uh, association between uh, pictures and paragraphs and, um, uh, and that would work uh, well. So now let's, uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, our picture and as I double click on it notice that the image properties come back. Uh, here is a, a point uh, of, uh, of interest to us the image location really should be a one-word expression. Okay, we should not see any folder names here. So sometimes uh, students will see uh, something like this, which often means that this picture is in the pictures folder and will not be published properly. And yet sometimes you will see this starting with the word file. Uh, slash slash and then uh, C drive and then uh, other other expressions and folders uh, usually a very long expression this also would not publish correctly um, so what we have to do in this instance would be to reselect the file okay we'll go ahead and reselect the file and if other characters are added. There's actually a bug in Composer when, when sometimes, even though the file is in the same folder, um, Composer references this in an absolute way instead of the relative way as, as we expect, and it'll put the word file and so forth. So you'll have to delete everything right up to the name of the file. Okay, and so then you'll say okay so that the picture um, is rendered uh, as, as expected. Okay, uh, once uh, we've uh, used uh, the tables, we've used the links, uh, we could take a look at uh, perhaps uh, uh, more options on tables themselves. 
So let's look at uh, cell background and color. Uh, on a menu like this one, we might want to uh, set a little background. So let's uh, uh, use a little yellow on our page, say OK to that. And uh, you, you'll notice that uh, the cell is taking on a background. We can do the same for, uh, for the table. So let's go ahead and now switch to the table. And uh, now the entire table will have um, a yellow background. So if we go ahead and save and then browse. All right. So there's a little bit of uh, creativity here where we have uh, our uh, menu highlighted. And again, notice uh, that the table helps us to manage the layout of the page as we resize the page. Okay. Um, our layout is going to adjust uh, as well. So uh, I hope this was uh, helpful to you and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, reviewing your web pages and uh, enjoying that in class. Thank you very much.